Um, Mr. Ambassador, let's continue this uh, on that trajectory. And I was asking about where the connection is between uh, the uh, Geoffrey Oyema's um, um, uh, uh, ministry or department when it comes to Nigeria's foreign economic uh, policy. Well, uh, Geoffrey uh, Foreign Minister is a friend of mine. Foreign Minister Oyema has done exceptionally well as far as I'm concerned. As I said to you on the 5th of April, uh, he will launch uh, the Nigerian Economic Diplomacy Initiative. Now, this is coherent. Uh, with what um, our finance minister, uh, Kemi Adoshin, was doing. I mean, just brilliant, absolutely great work uh, in terms of uh, tightening um, loopholes, plugging loopholes, um, stopping leakages, um, uh, improving tax collection. You can take it also to what has been done by the governor of the central bank uh, in terms of stabilizing the um, uh, the BOP situation, improving our, our external reserves, mm -hmm. and it's seen that it's currently at a five-year high. Mm -hmm. And then take that also to what has been done remarkably, and frankly, in my view, in an outstanding way, uh, by uh, Senator Udoma Udoma, uh, um, in driving uh, the preparation of the economic recovery and growth plan. So you have to be able, Nigerians must be able to see the coherence under President Buhari with regard to foreign policy, the Nigerian Economic our Diplomacy Initiative. Don't forget to talk to Jeffrey on the 5th of April. What our finance minister has done remarkably, uh, what Ud Professor, what Senator Odoma Odoma has done with regard to ERGP. And then not least, not least, how is all this, how does all this come together? I'm an advisor, a trade advisor to the economic management team. You should try and see if you can get an appointment to speak to our vice president, Professor Shimbajo, when he's at work. He supervises all this. He is our direct boss in terms of the week by week administration of coherence in economic policy. We just, we have to be a bit more patient because the damage to the economy was a long term. It took, it, it happened over a long term. A lot of it is institutional and systemic and we have to give uh, the effects of policy uh, some time to uh, to take effect uh, and show their uh, results. Ambassador Sokwe, and thank you very much for bringing this in. This is the, uh, the 2017 Nigeria Annual Trade Policy. Uh, report and and it's almost a hundred pages, but uh, but I'm looking at uh, page 83 is going to sound a little bit like an annual shareholders meeting. So I'm referring you as the chairman <laughs> of this uh, to this report. And one of the damage that you just talk about is that the establishment of the database for all of Nigeria's trade agreements since independence is expected to be completed in 2018. We don't have a database. No, what it suggests that we don't have a database for all the agreements Nigeria have signed since independence. No, we don't. We don't have a register. You can call it a database. You can call it a register. I mean, there are lots of uh, scandals uh, that we're dealing with. It's, uh, I remember President Jonathan's uh, government, as the predecessor government, dealt, or was it, I, I think, under President Obasanjo, that dealt with a similar scandal. There was there was no debt register. And thanks to President Obasanjo and uh, his finance minister, Ngozi Okonjo. In terms Wala, of a debt profile. In terms of the debt profile and a debt register. Mm. So what we're dealing with comparably in the trade area, there is no way you can go to and you find a register of either the trade MOUs that we have completed from independence all the trade agreements and it's 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 not it's not a glorious picture uh, but you know when you're dealing with things that happened over a long term the first thing not to do one thing you must not do is to begin to blame individuals uh, or blame governments i think it's the wrong way to go so one of the things that president buhari has done it and it's in the mandate establishing the nigerian office for trade negotiations is Find your trade agreements, put them in a digital register, review them, and see if there are ones that constitute economic dead weight 
so that we can exit them, see if there are others that we can update and modernize and for goodness sake wherever whatever you do make sure that we can click a button and find out what we have negotiated we're still on that some we've been able to find very few 30 percent of the work is done we may have to go sorry to say We may have to go to the colonial office in London to look into their archives and see also what we can get from there. But it's work in progress. And that's on a very sad note. But but let's uh, let's look at the sunshine part of that. When we talk about bilateral trade, and uh, as a business journalist, and I report this on a daily basis, on a regular basis, that yes, we have a very fantastic numbers uh, trading with China, with the U.S., and what have you, whether it is Agoa. But when it comes to the devils in the details, you find that the foreign uh, economies always have the upper hand in terms of size. So it may be $10 billion. When you break it down, you find that we're holding the short end of the carrot. Does it have to do with the way we negotiate trade previously on the previous administrations to date? It does. In fact, your question takes me back to the 10th of May of 2017, that was last year, when the memorandum was uh, presented by Minister Enelema to the Federal Executive Council uh, for the Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiations to be, um, uh, to be established. And so I hope I'm not breaking official secret acts. I'm not a very, I'm not your typical civil servant. And so, but what what I remember from that day, because I was brought in as an official just to sit in and take notes. What I remember from that day was that Minister um, uh, Udoma Udoma took the floor and said, I support the establishment of the Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiations. Normally, I am against the proliferation and creation of new agencies. We should reduce them, not increase them, but I'm supporting this because it will enable Nigeria to improve the terms of trade and negotiations. I think he gave the best answer to the question that you just <laughs> asked. So the, so the balance of trade, when uh, since you took office, and of course some of your experience since, uh, as an ambassador uh, will, will fit in into your current uh, engagement one way or the other, uh, a bit of an arm twisting uh, of uh, other uh, uh, trade ministers and officials of other governments when you sit around the table, it's not easy to negotiate trade. Uh, basically, so what's the office of the trade negotiator really mean? Well, think about it. I mean, there are models. Think about it in terms of the Office of the United States Trade Representative. Think about it in terms of the Caribbean Office for Trade Negotiations. Uh, Think about it in terms of uh, the DG Trade in the European Union. So you constitute a team of trade negotiators uh, with competence. I mean, real world class competence in the areas of trade in goods, trade in services, uh, intellectual property, competition, investment, the digital economy, and then you have trade statisticians because you can never really do any good trade negotiations if you don't have the data. And then so this is this will be the panoply, the arsenal that you need to compose a good team. And the next will be the priorities. So what would the priorities be? And those were set out in the Federal Executive Council memo of uh, May 2015, and it's as follows, one, eliminate the coordination deficit in Nigerian negotiations on economic and trade policy matters. Because prior to the establishment of the NOTN, every MDA was its own trade and economic negotiator. So every person for himself and God for us all. And you know what that leads to chaos. So eliminate the coordination deficit.